Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and welcome to your SmackDown review. And much like Raw, another show, another WrestleMania season show that just completely fell flat. And, you know, this main event that they have now cooking for Fastlane, you've got to be joking me. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn again? In some way, shape, or form with AJ Styles. We just had those three guys in the ring at the Royal Rumble. Now they're going to, you know, instead of it being a handicap match, now it's a triple threat match. And, you know, they've been playing out this triple threat match to, to, to the bitter end. I mean, triple threat for the universal title. Handicap match with three guys. Triple threat match on Raw. You've got triple threat matches coming out of your fucking ass on, on, on Raw and SmackDown, all these pay-per-views. You know, there, isn't there any more one-on-one -on -one matches? I mean, the way how I feel is that they don't think that these one-on-one -on -one matches are strong enough to be presented on, on a pay-per-view. As, um, you know, just a standalone match. It doesn't feel important enough, so they got to add another person. And I'm here to say that that's not helping at all. You're, it's cheapening it. And, you know, back when, back in the day, triple threat matches were pretty scarce. Now, you'll, you know, people will probably come up with examples where they were more frequent, you know, but the, the thing is, I felt like they were fewer and far between. You get a lot of one on one matches, and when they, Reached a scenario when it really had to happen, where they really felt that in order to get the, the talent over, they had to put more than two guys in the ring at a time. They would do it. Now it's not even fun. It doesn't seem fresh. They just pelt out a bunch of th triple threat matches, you know, j just like it's an everyday occurrence. And it's making it fucking boring. Well, it already is boring without there being an abundance of triple threat matches. But now you've got more than you could ever even dream of. So for people that like multi-person matches, you know, they like this orgy style of professional wrestling, then, you know, more power to you. This is probably why you've got some smarks out there who say this is one of the best eras ever. Because, you know, you're, you're, you're getting all this... All of these multi-person matches, you know, they can't make up their mind who they want to be the challenger, and, and so they just throw everybody out there, and it's 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 gotten really old very quickly. So we started off with a promo. Shane McMahon is confronting Daniel Bryan in the ring. He's saying that you you know you want to you want to wrestle. Uh, but you can't, so you're living vicariously through Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. It's quite obvious at this point that Daniel Bryan will probably wrestle. And I will say I am looking forward to how they're going to do this. Now, I just said in my Raw review, you know, we, we constantly stand here in these videos and we hope and we pray and we dream of what could be in WWE. And we're just not going to get it. That's what I'm saying. It's pointless to, you know, keep on saying that, oh, I'm looking forward to this. This has potential. Whenever there is potential, there is definitely going to be massive disappointment, guys. I mean, you know, we're, we're, it's not like this only happens on occasion. This is an, every single week. They, they, they keep on lowering the bar disappointment after disappointment. This is a company that doesn't take advantage of any opportunity, the talent they have to do interesting things. You know, anytime something interesting comes about, they, you know, somehow got to, you know, uh, dismiss it. Like I'm saying, you, you, we waited for Broken Matt Hardy. I said this on Raw. We waited. We asked WWE for it. Oh, you know, why are you going back to the Hardys? Let's go back to the TNA stuff with Broken Matt and Brother Nero. We finally get it, and it's unfulfilling. They're barely even trying to get the character over. They're not writing him into interesting scenarios. They're just, you know, Matt Hardy's just laughing like a lunatic, and he's, you know, just um, sneaking up behind Bray Wyatt on Raw. And you compare it to... 
TNA, which had far less resources, far less cash, you know, and they had to abide by, you know, so many restrictions. WWE should be taking full advantage of that and taking that character to new heights that it had never been before. But once again, it's another failed opportunity. So you see what I'm saying here? You know, you could keep on getting your hopes up and they're going to keep on getting dashed because that's just what kind of a company we're talking about here. Um, so AJ Styles comes out and, you know, I don't even understand the point of this. You know, he says, whoever it is, he's a fighting champion, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, like, this is, again, the slow burn that we keep on hearing about. You know, Wade Keller, Magoo, they all talk about this shit, about the slow burn in storylines, how it's important. They, these guys used to complain that during the Attitude Era, rivalries would be over too quickly. You know, they wanted longer matches. And now, that's what we got. They finally listened to the Dirt Sheet writers. They, def they, they started listening to all these goofs like Keller and Magoo and Powell and all these other morons. And so now, we get feuds that last and will slow burn. Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt, does anybody remember how agonizing that was late last year for that feud? Does anybody remember how many times those guys wrestled each other? Because we want longer feuds, right, guys? What a, what a novel idea, right? Keep on playing out a feud, even if it's not over, even if no one's reacting to it, even if it isn't getting ratings and people are tuning out. Just keep going with it, right? Because according to all these these mama Luke's on the dirt sheets, you know, oh, it's just not long enough. You, you know, forget about the fact that shorter feuds and, you know, more rapid succession in the writing, you know, led to bigger ratings. Of, you know, forget about that. Forget about the past. It's in the past, right? You know, it's not like we could ever learn from history, right? Of course not. Let's just keep on doing, let's, you know, let's keep on going with the status quo. Even though the status quo is complete fucking hot garbage, let's still keep going the same path. Brilliant idea. So backstage, I was quite surprised. They have New Day acting like a bunch of goofballs. They're doing weird shit with pancakes. Uh, I, what is this thing? How did it even get started with the fucking flapjacks? But, what, why could anybody ask? Okay, okay so... What is their, first of all, what was their obsession with unicorns? I don't know. Their obsession with cereal? I don't know. Uh, their obsession with pancakes is probably, you know, oh, Brad, you're just not getting a joke. No, this is, you're talking to a person that has put over broken mat more than anybody. I get the strange humor. But the Flapjacks is taking it to a whole nother level. There is like, you know, some, you know, weird humor you know, uh, obscure humor, and then there's just complete idiocy, and that's what you're seeing there. But that's not the story here. The pancakes have been there for months. It's the fact that Big E was answering questions on Twitter and asked, you know, um, does Corey Graves have a better left or right jab? And they were referencing the Booker T shit. And this actually blew me away here. I, I I was like, okay, so they're acknowledging it. So Booker T is still employed by the company. Are we going to see Booker T on the pre-show panel uh, come Elimination Chamber, I wonder? Now, I know that WWE doesn't have the balls to do this. Now, they were ballsy to do this here. I'm surprised. See, this is what shocks me. This is a company that wants to be politically correct. You know, we're pro-feminism. All the women are equal to the men um, in every single way. You know, even though we're going to line them up on SmackDown like they're a bunch of androids, you know. Um, that's besides the point. That's besides the point, motherfucker. Okay, so it's, it's very odd that this company that plays it so squeaky clean most of the time, be a star... You know, don't bully people that right here they're they're mentioning this as like a joke. And and I mean, I liked it. I thought that that was, you know, uh, a good thing that finally they're 
playing off of reality, which is something that I said they should be doing for a very long time. They, you know, if they're not going to reference pop culture, at least, you know, uh, do a bit of commentary on what's going on in the industry. That's why I liked it when the revival talked out against the fans. Um, so, you know, small things like that, but imagine if they booked Booker T and Corey Graves at WrestleMania, if they could put their personal differences aside and actually work a match and have like a, a real life feud. I mean, this is a company, this is what I'll never understand. So they're done with kayfabe and, you know, many people will make the argument, okay, well, you know, kayfabe with social media and people learned a long time ago that this is, you know, uh, a fake form of entertainment. Okay. But this is also the business that this is where everyone contradicts themselves. So now it's, so it's all fake and everything. But this is also the same company where where the fans want to see people stiffing each other and fighting for real. And they want to see the female Naka Murphys of the world knocking Sasha Banks block off, you know, with one of her kicks. And they want to see her stiffing Bailey and all this stuff, you know. Okay, so it's like the audience at an old Roman Coliseum. You know, they want to see blood. They want to see people get hurt. They want to see them torn limb from limb. I told you so. You know, so so, but but we don't want kayfabe, right? You know, let, let's totally break that. They're all on their Instagram, hugging and kissing and having a good time, smiling their asses off. And you know, this is the whole reason why we see, you know. Um, you know, people, you see Braun Strowman smiling. We see Ronda Rousey at the room. Hey, guys, I'm supposed to be dangerous. How you doing? You know, like friendly Rousey, you know, smiling Rousey. So, you know, we're, we're putting aside kayfabe. We're putting aside characters. And, you know, it's all about reality. Remember that, the reality era? Remember that bullshit era that they came up with in, like, 2000. 14. Remember when they announced it and everybody bought into it? Oh, this is the real. Okay, so if we truly are in the reality era and, you know, kayfabe is dead and we're going to be real now, I mean, I'm all for that. Kill off the kayfabe now. Let's make it reality. Let's start talking about real life. So if that was the case, you know, we'd start addressing this. I, I said this time and time again. If they're not going to punish Sasha Banks. Have her come out there and say, I ended Paige's career and gloat about it. She'd be a heel for, for, for a lifetime. And I'd, I'd get behind it. I'd be like, okay, you know, so it was an accident of Sasha Banks. So I could kind of see, all right, so maybe they want to, you know, just give her a pass. Okay, that's what we're doing here. You know, they give people passes. They've given Seth Rollins at least 16 passes the past couple of years. So be that as it may. You have an opportunity here to really play off the reality era that you claim that you're in right now. So where is my Corey Gray's Booker T. Street fight? Could you imagine how awesome that would be? And people will say, oh, it's con and I see Wade Keller already getting triggered. Oh, it's condoning us. This is excellent. It's, it's great. If it's triggering somebody like Wade Keller, then we should definitely have this. Don't you guys get it? Basically, every single thing that Wade Keller and Meltzer Magoo don't want in wrestling, we should get. Because that that right there is the key. If they're going to write a show, do the exact opposite of what these guys are asking for. And, and I guarantee you, we'll get an excellent show. Because these are the guys that hate the attitude here. Keep that in mind. Backstage, AJ Styles bumps into Naka Murphy. And that's the only thing besides a little video package of wrestlers reacting to the top 10. And oh God, the top 10, I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, this is the only time we saw Naka Murphy. The Royal Rumble winner, he's going to be at WrestleMania. You think he'd get a big promo. You think they'd make a big deal out of him on every show leading up to me. Could, could you imagine this? Stone Cold won the Royal Rumble. And and they just showed him in a brief 30-second clip backstage. You'd look at that and you'd say, what the hell? What kind of, of a jip is that? Now, I'm not asking for more Naka Murphy. But if you're going to put this guy as your Rumble, Royal Rumble winner, 
you, you, he beat out Orton, he beat out Cena, he beat out all these big names to get, you know, to that winner's position and be the last man standing in the match. And you're going to fucking tell me that you're only going to show this guy for 30 seconds interacting with somebody? He tells AJ Styles, I'm going to beat you and bet wrestle WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Like rustling through the bushes, basically. Uh, okay, so, uh, you know, that that's it. There's your big Royal Rumble winner there, guys. Right? Now on to the next segment. I mean, it's WrestleMania season, right? So, you know, th th this is how you want to treat your Royal Rumble winner. Just by showing him for a few brief seconds. Um, I mean, you, you can't make this stuff up. You could not just... I mean, this is a company where they had this guy win the Rumble, which I don't even like, but I feel sorry for the guy in the same breath because they're not even giving him any screen time. And and this is who you picked out of 29 other people that this is who you wanted to represent your company and go into WrestleMania. As I said, Hulk Hogan, um, I mean... Um, you know, who, 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 I did the big Royal Rumble was Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, um, you know, Stone Cold, Triple H, all these big Royal Rumble winners. Okay. And so, because I don't think Hulk Hogan's ever won a Royal Rumble. Not that I can remember anyway. But, um, you know, all these big names, right? And after they won that Rumble, they were all over TV. It was a big deal. Now we fast forward to 2018. Naka Murphy wins the Rumble. Yay, the Smarks win. We're getting our dream match. And he's featured for 30 seconds backstage. Uh, Charlotte defeated Liv Morgan. Um, okay, you, you know, uh, great. She says uh, one down, two to go. So I, I guess that Fastlane will get... Our dream match of Charlotte versus Ruby Riot, and I'm, I'm so excited for that, guys. So fucking excited, can barely contain myself. Oh, I can't wait to see the match between Charlotte and Liv and the uh, uh, what's her name, Sarah Logan. Oh wow, what, what, that's a match I'm anticipating. The Bludgeon Brothers defeated two jobbers, and you know, oh, God, like all right. How how many weeks is this really going to go on? Okay, and then um, the Usos come out to the ring for their promo. They pass the Bludgeon Brothers. No contact. They look at each other. It's the same thing as last week. It's a repeat, basically. I mean, the thing is, wh 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 where's the progression on this show? Oh, it's a slow burn, Brad. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting. It's all about the slow burn. Uh, so the Usos cut another promo very similar to last week. And it's a good promo. I mean, these guys are putting a lot of energy into their promo. They're really, you know, using some good language here to come out tough. But it's not leading to anything. I mean, once again, the opportunity for the Bludgeon Brothers to come out and challenge them or beat them down and try to shut them up would, uh, you know, be a good idea, but oh, but remember, it's a slow burn. We'll get to it when we get to it, right? Because that, that that's what brings in the ratings. That's what makes for a good wrestling product, right? Slow, lethargic pacing, boring, nothing's going on. Oh, but, but we'll get to it. it it's coming. It's going to happen. Um, Then we get the top 10 list from Daniel Bryan. And so, you know, I, 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 some of these people were on the show, but I wrote down some names. So at number 10 was Ty Dillinger, who's, first of all, he, he lost last week to Baron Corbin. He's not even on this show at all last week. Uh, I mean, this week. He, he's not even on. And so, you know, he's, he, but he's number 10. Somehow, some way, he's number 10. Uh, I, I don't know why, um, I don't think Kevin Owens or Sami Zayn was on the list at all. Uh, you know, somehow this this is your and what is the purpose of this list? So, so here's some other ones. They put Becky Lynch on the list. She's not even there at all. You know, the, when, when they were featuring the women on the show, they didn't even show up. Um, so 
Okay, so New Day is there. They're just backstage. They're eating pancakes. They're doing nothing. So, um, you know, but they're on the list. And, and Naomi, another person who's not even on the show, she's on the list. And what does this list even mean? They said last week Daniel Bryan said they, they just decided on this list. The, it's not like they voted for on the website or anything like that. It's supposed to be like they made this list. Okay, so, like, but what does the list even mean? Obviously, it doesn't go by anything in particular. Ty Dillinger's number 10. He, he, he lost it last week. So why is he even on there when people who actually win were not on it? Uh, and it's like, just you see this list, and you say it's like they're making a fake list, and this shit is fake to begin with, and it looks so fucking dumb. They're making a list, a ranking system, like this is a real sport or anything. They could do whatever they want. They could book whatever match they want. We don't need a list. Like I said, it's lazy. It's some excuse. They're trying to come up with new things. Just stop it already. The list is a dumb idea. Now, I know, you know people like lists, right? This is the whole reason we've, we've always had like the top 10 music videos. TRL was popular. People like lists here on YouTube. I do list the top 10, the top worst people, you know. So people like it. It's exciting countdown. You know, you want to see who gets each ranking. People like rankings. Uh, people like looking at the rankings um, on ESPN for baseball. I mean, so you could kind of see where they're coming up with this idea why a top 10 list would be interesting. But it's not, it's not, and it's so dumb, it, it doesn't even have anything like, well, how do these people get on the list? What, 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 what is the purpose of it? What did they say last week? It determines who gets an opportunity. Well, why do they need a list to tell them that? And what credentials do you have to have? So it's like, you put this thing together, you're presenting a new idea, and you're not even explaining what goes into it. Uh, so you have a list just to have it. Uh, backstage again, they had Big E. Uh, Big E said number six. He, he says that that's about the, the the percentage chance that I would give to Corey Graves in the street fight. And again, they joked about it. So I mean, is that does that mean that they're at least contemplating actually giving us a Booker T. Corey Graves thing? Uh, probably not. Like he said, they don't have the balls to do it. They will broach. The subject matter, but they won't go full frontal. If they ever, if, you know, if they did, this product would already be at least decent. I mean, this is, you look at the current writing that they have right now, you know, they would have done it already. They would have already pounced on it. They would have already put Booker T, Corey Graves out there and addressed the subject. Um, then we had Bobby Roode defeating Rusev. Uh, so here goes Rusev's push uh, attempt number 73. It's not going to happen, guys. Then Randy Orton comes out of nowhere, hits the RKO on Bobby Roode. Um, I wouldn't mind at this stage in the game seeing Orton do something similar to Cena, like with the U.S. title, what he did for it, like, you know, do that that U.S. Open challenge. I wouldn't mind seeing that at this stage in Orton's career. But that, I'll say right there, that's not a bad idea for a few. Give Orton something to do, for God's sakes. He's the only star power left on this show. I mean, you look at this whole roster, and you look at Randy Orton. He's the only guy that really stands out among any of these people. In the land of Naka Murphys and Bitch Boy Cab Driver Sammy Zanes and Fat Boy Kevin Owens, Randy Orton's looking pretty fucking good in comparison. Uh, Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin did one of the worst, cheesiest promos I've ever seen. They Everything they said, they started putting up the, the, the words of what they were saying. Uh, tag destruction. I mean, they're trying so hard with these guys. They've already lost multiple times. I've said it time and time again, you know, uh, Gable has talent. He's got, a, you know, a guy looks like he works out pretty hard. Uh, I don't really see him looking like much like a star. I said Shelton Benjamin 
by today's standards, should already be like a world champion. I mean, because he looks better than half these guys out there. And you put together the fact that he's got veteran status. I don't see why he's wasting away in a tag division like this, um, where it's like devoid of any sort of entertainment at all. Like You're reducing Shelton Benjamin, the guy who pinned Triple H on Raw, to a raucous response uh, back in 2004. And now to see him in this lame-ass fucking promo with words being put on the screen, it looked fucking cheap. It looked stupid, it looked cheesy, it looked corny, it looked horrible. I mean, to me, like, to see somebody in this position now when they were doing that great stuff back then, I, I, I mean, you know, you've got all this proof on the network showing all the stuff that Benjamin did, and to see him be reduced to this, I, I mean, it's really, it makes you want to shake your head and fucking disgust. Benjamin and Gable beat the Ascension. Yay! Like, what, what am I supposed to say about this? Okay, so, you know, they're, they're beating teams, but then when it really counts, they can't win. What's the point? Then in the, the main event, AJ Styles can't take it anymore, so he interrupts. I mean, I wouldn't be able to take it more. Here we are sitting again watching another Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens match. I think, what would the, the, the fans were like? chanting, they love this match. Oh, it's a classic. We've already seen it 60 times, but I guess it's another classic again, right? You know, if, if it was up to remember, you know, fight forever, fight forever, this is awesome. I mean, like, okay, so, you know, you want to see them fight forever. I guarantee you, Kevin Owens could not fight forever. I, he'd go belly up, as I said, as a fucking beached whale. The free willy Owens would not be able to last that long. I guarantee you. I'm I'm even impressed how how long he lasted in the Hell in the Cell match. I guarantee you. You know the the guy. I mean, he's got actually pretty good stamina for somebody who's that fucking rotund. But um, you, you know, I don't really think he could fight forever. Just saying. So, uh, AJ interferes. Now we're getting a triple threat match because that's what we want to see. We want to see them again, right? We've already seen every single ensemble, AJ versus Owens, um, Zayn versus AJ, uh, Zayn versus Owens, AJ versus the two of them in a handicap match, a tag match. So now we got to have the triple threat match. we got to exhaust... Every single possibility that we could do with these guys before we could fucking move on. Uh, I mean, holy cow. I mean, this is why it feels so processed. You just can't wait until certain feuds are over so they can move on to the next boring-ass, disappointing feud. I mean, what what, what kind of a, of a fan relationship is this supposed to be? I mean, well, why sit here and watch something where you're, like, being tormented by this? You can't wait for it to end just so you can see what they have in store for you. I mean, it's the curiosity. It's the human curiosity. We all want to see what WWE is going to give us next. You know, even if it is just horrible feud after horrible feud. I mean, this is this is so boring to me. I mean, like, I like AJ Styles, but I'm, I'm bored with him as champion. I, I don't think this is a good title run at all. It's boring as fuck. I don't care if, like he said, he traveled 10,000 miles defending this championship. It's boring as shit. He's only defending it against the same fucking people. Zayn, Owens, Owens, Zayn. I mean, in some way, shape, or fashion. I mean, AJ really hasn't wrestled anybody else besides Brock Lesnar and Jinder Mahal. I, I, I mean, really, he... he Last year, all he was doing was facing Kevin Owens. And now he's wrestling him again. They took a break for for a couple of months so he could do that Jinder Lesnar stuff. And then they moved on again. to back, they, Well, they didn't move on. They moved back to where they were a few months previously so they could finish it up. I mean, it's endless. It really is an endless feud. And, and like, okay, I guess it's until we get to Mania. That's when they're finally going to end it. But 
I mean, this Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn thing, this has got to be one of the worst ideas they've had putting these two guys together. It has not been entertaining. It has not been good. It's not been fun. It's It's been torturous is what it's been. It's been downright torturous. So there you go, guys. You know, it's WrestleMania season. I got to keep reminding people that because if we don't, you know, if there wasn't people looking up at the WrestleMania, so, oh, yeah, Ronda Rousey was on the show. Because why would she be there? Oh, Brad, she's she's filming a movie. Lay off of her. Okay, so, so here's the thing. So, you know, people keep making this thing up, uh, up about, you know, uh, Edge filming a movie, okay, you know, okay, they're not making it up, it happened, and Ronda Rousey, and they keep telling me, oh, stop, start, so, okay, so here I am mentioning it, I mean, it really is, it's a bit ridiculous, you brought Rousey out there at the Rumble, you naturally think she's going to be there the next day, oh, she decided to film a movie, so what kind of timing is that? I thought that she was going to be committed to, to WWE, so she booked herself to fucking film a movie right after appearing and getting all that hype behind her. So, okay, so maybe they should have waited or introduced her a bit earlier. Oh, well, we want to do it at the Rumble. Well, okay, but it's bad timing. You wouldn't see this back in the day, all this sloppy-ass shit where people are not showing up for things. And, oh, I'm shooting a movie. You know, th that really shows her dedication there, right? She just appeared and she's already filming something outside of WWE. That, that really shows a lot of dedication there, guys. Oh, she, she's fully committed to the business, just like Piper, right? Yeah, just like Piper, of course. Of course, because that's why she decided to film a movie right after appearing. Oh, full-time... You know, she's committed. Okay, yeah, I, I believe it, guys. All right. Anyway, this has been your YWC champ, and I am signing out, motherfuckers. <laughs>